When I was getting into the plane on the day of the flyover, I was in go mode. Ever since becoming a pilot, I now have this mentality where I just am so compartmentalized, so laser focused that I just don't feel emotions when I'm flying or doing things aviation related. So I was excited about this happening. I was excited to be flying, but I wasn't really feeling the weight of what was happening. Once I was introduced to aviation, it was constantly going through my mind, how can I integrate this and reconcile this with my passion for environmental conservation? Because the aircraft I was flying were all gas powered, and I was constantly looking for a way to integrate this with my passion for conservation, new battery technologies. Remy had approached me about this project they was working on, he said something to do with four different 50 Lightnings and an airplane. And I, and I was like, yeah, I'm in. He was telling me about his adventures in trying to get the plane from Connecticut to PA and organizing everything for the flyover. And it sounded amazing. And he said, can you help? I said, absolutely. You get in an airplane right now, it, you know, it's using jet fuel and the small aircraft even still use leaded fuel, right? That's something that we have to move away from. And once I learned about electric planes, I thought to myself, I'd love to fly one of these one day. I thought to myself, where are planes demonstrated? Lafayette and Lehigh have the longest running football rivalry in the country, and national anthem flyovers are a unique sporting event experience where you can inspire people outside of the aviation community. This was the last year the game was going to be hosted at Lafayette while I was a student. It was 10 weeks to game day. It was now or never. So Remy stopped in the director's office and he said, so I got an idea. I'm going to fly an electric plane over the Lafayette High game. What do you think? I said, I think that's fantastic. And two days later, he knocked on the door again and said, hey, it's a go. <laughs> Our Alpha Electro aircraft here cruises at 85 knots, has up to an hour of flight time, and the redundant battery system can recharge in just over an hour. Electric aircraft are significantly less expensive to operate and maintain, and just like electric cars, they're a blast to pilot. The next big hurdle, getting the charging infrastructure, so getting the plane here meant recharging it. And with the time frame, the nine and a half weeks that this got put together in, we really didn't have enough time to install chargers at all these airports. And my uncle and my father said, hey, why don't you charge it from this high power plug in the back of a F-150 Lightning? So one night we went down to the student government office because we need somewhere quiet to go. Got some Hot Wheels cars, literally like bank heists, just like moving the cars along, trying to really make this as smooth and seamless as possible. The mission would start at Hartford Brainerd Airport in Connecticut for our seven leg trip across four states. To pull this off, we formed a caravan of four electric trucks, three electric cars, two planes, and one helicopter. Ground teams one and two included the Ford Lightning trucks, which transported the electric plane charger, dubbed the football, to each airport. The electric aircraft would fly in formation with the other plane and helicopter, filming our voyage from the sky. The caravan's final destination would be Braden Air Park, located in Easton, Pennsylvania, two miles from Fisher Stadium, the site of the big game. There's a special plug that the plane uses. There's a special plug that goes into the truck and we needed those connected. You can't buy cables that connect the two of those. So we needed cables fabricated. Adam Smith is the electronics and robotics specialist in the engineering division. And I knew that Adam could make the, the cables, the charging cables. He's literally built the bridge between the two vehicles that makes this whole project possible. 
The team at Pipistrol made some custom software for the plane charger that was vital to making it work properly with the electric truck. A professor of mine at Lafayette is college buddies with the executive chairman at Ford, so then we were going to put together a pitch. But then Ford said, we love the project, we don't have any vehicles we can give you. That was the next curveball. I was like, how are we going to find people with these trucks? So I put together a pitch, posted it on the three F-150 Lightning forums. Came across this on Twitter uh, when the, the CEO of Ford saw tweeting it out and uh, reached out to Remy on one of the Lightning forums, connected with them, and uh, just said, hey, I have a Ford Lightning. And if I could help, I'd uh, love to be a part of this. Sounds pretty cool. So one of the neat features I think about what Ford did on the Lightnings, put this little Easter egg. It says it's the first electric vehicle that was made by Henry Ford in 1913. I made a whole flow chart of who, who do we need to get on board with this and who, whose say would completely cancel the project. And it really came down to the FAA. So the FAA, they never before granted one of these waivers to an electric plane. And many of the folks who I talked to in the aviation community, they didn't think we were going to be able to get it. There's a lot of anxiety on my end because once word got out about this and we still didn't have the FAA waiver form in hand, people were like, oh, I'm so excited to see this flyover. And I, I felt more stressed than I really ever had felt stressed before in my life. It was like, if we don't have it, we don't have it. And that, that really got to me. So the day that I got that email with the 7711-2 form, I ran laps around giving people high fives because I was just so relieved and so excited for, for what was to come. Making coffee for the group. Most important thing, never made coffee before, so today's full of first. And we are now in drive. We have poles there. We're gonna pull up. No obstacles to the left. So it is still raining. Especially with how the weather is in terms of it being okay now and then it might get worse. Maybe the forecast is wrong again. We just wanna be able to take advantage of good weather when we have it. See you all on the other side. We loaded up the football in the truck that's behind us, being trailed by the electric airplane. Uh, now we're uh, on our way to our first stop, which is the Waterbury and Oxford uh, Airport. Copy. All right, Copy, how are you guys doing? Uh, well, you let us know when you guys are ready to go, because we're ready to go. We're down here holding short of the runway right now. All right, Roger, we're good birds there on the taxiway. Good yeah, visibility. Yeah, you're good. Damn, this is sick, Bill. Yeah. You ready? Let's turn it over. Electric aircraft—they're really interesting and unique. They benefit from the same things that electric cars do, the instant torque, and they're also really, really quiet. The lack of ambient noise from the plane, not having a gas engine, meant that the flying experience was just so much more enjoyable and peaceful. I handed off the controls to Phil as we came into land at our first stop, taking a moment to turn off my flying mentality and really take in the gravity of completing the first leg of our journey. Oh, butter. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. That was, that was, that was very well done. Thank you. <laughs> that was very well done. We flew halfway here, halfway here with the flap still down. So we, so we were expecting six, 
flaps. flaps down. <laughs> Why? I had that. Because we forgot you about it. it. No, we were so excited that we just forgot about it. See, we got to the wing wraps. This says bring the world in, and says go Lafayette. <laughs> Our team mantra was if it doesn't break the laws of physics, this country, or your moral compass, you do whatever it takes. And we had done that. Blood, sweat, and tears, and we were now making history. Rolling, verified, yes, we are recording. Okay, I'm ready to go. Wind 350 at 1 3, clear for takeoff. Terminal A4, Romeo, Romeo, runway 8, clear to land. If we want to do them as approach lighting, they'll tap their brakes to give us the visual rear one, and then their headlights will illuminate the runway for us. get to the keys to today's ball game here at Lafayette as a beautiful day 12,000 people are expected to fill the stadium obviously a very exciting exciting day yeah, it's a snowy last night colder but I think it's still a beautiful day for football and so great to be here Gary I tell you what you know you and I have done a lot of these but this one's got some electricity let's turn and burn and traffic experimental 84 Romeo Romeo back taxi runway 1-8 Right in traffic. We are on the ground and in the sky. Sky and ground looks good. Four, six, three, five. Good. Oh, birds, oh, good. Can you watch those on yeah, the birds. Oh, we got a huge flock in front Holy of us. Holy sh! We coined what we did the anti-flyover because typical jets will rumble a stadium, but when we were flying overhead, it was entirely silent. We're heading back. Cheers, team. Great job out there. We'll see you back at the field. Let's go! The hope of this project is to really get people excited about the future. It's going to be different. We're going to have to change. We're going to have to adapt. But it's going to be really cool. I think it's cool to know that I can contribute to, you know, even the smallest slice of history. 
And what we did goes to show what we can do for the generations to come. I feel like all of Remy's projects are really amazing because of the human connection. These people that you would never otherwise meet are some of the most amazing people and from such diverse backgrounds. If you have a vision, people are excited to help and that can help carry you a lot farther as a group than you can individually. Remy has a lot of like big ideas, right? His goal in life is to just take projects and do them. Do something that nobody else has done before. I think that wide-eyed vision of the world is something that's really admirable. You learn a set of skills, and then you apply them and you do something. And you feel that feeling of freedom, that feeling of confidence, that feeling of accomplishment that is intoxicating. Yeah.